vehicles from the 1980s versus other diesels. Why were Mercedes so much better? Not all diesel cars are created equal. And I think that many of us forget just how, Mer how great Mercedes were with their diesel engine program in the 1980s and how bad other automotive manufacturers were also during that period of time. So if you couldn't or didn't afford or didn't, well, didn't want to spend the money on a, Mer a Mercedes diesel or if you couldn't afford one, you had some other choices. You had a 40 40 ish horsepower Volkswagen diesel with a timing belt and a weak head gasket. You had an Oldsmobile diesel, and if you don't know how bad they were, just check out um, this channel called Rare Classic Cars and Automotive History, and Adam will school you about just how bad diesel engines were from GM and, and what, what some of their issues were. But we, we actually had some GM diesels. There was a diesel Volvo, and if you hated changing one timing belt, imagine changing two. There was a Nissan Maxima diesel, and the Nissan Maxima diesel had a belt-driven injection pump. So imagine what happens if that belt fails. There were also four diesel pickups, and they were okay. They were just really slow. There, were, there was the International Scout Terra with a Nissan diesel, which was a pretty good diesel, but you had to buy it in an SUV. There was an Isuzu diesel, which was underpowered and smoky. There were Audi diesels, which were basically just Volkswagen diesels with a greater propensity to fail. And there were Peugeot diesels, which were initially quite good, but then they started to use electronic fuel injection, and they became bad. And there were diesels in the Ford Ranger, which were slow, but also very reliable, which again, you had to buy a pickup. You know, there were just, there were a lot of little diesels in the 80s. There's a Toyota Camry diesel, which I don't know anything about, a Nissan Sentra diesel, a Mercury Lynx and Ford Escort diesel, a diesel Chevette uh, with an Isuzu diesel. Um, there were... Who else made diesels that were brought to the United States? You could get a Winnebago Lachero mini motorhome with a Renault 2 liter diesel. And I think that you could also get, let's see here, what other weird cars came to the United States with diesel engines? You know, I, don't, I can't remember, but all the GM's, GM cars, Cadillac, Buick, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, they all had diesel options. And some of them were better than others, but they're, none of them are here today. So... And there were BMW diesels, and there was a Lincoln with a BMW diesel, if you wanted to go that far. Uh, the BMW diesel was also a piece of junk, um, which is why you don't see any of them. And there was a, uh, I think there were Nissan, Mitsubishi, Chevy Love, and Ford Courier diesel pickups as well. So during this period of time, everybody wanted a piece of the diesel pie, but Mercedes is the only one that has left a lasting legacy. You could argue that maybe Volkswagen did, but maybe other than like a lone rusty Volkswagen Caddy pickup, you don't see a lot of nice Volkswagen diesels from the early 80s. So why did Mercedes build their engines better? Well, first of all, they used cast iron heads. They didn't screw around with an aluminum head until they were ready, and arguably the Mercedes aluminum heads had their own negative legacy on the OM603 engine. Now, in the 601 engine and 602 non-turbo engine, they were fine, but generally aluminum is not the best material for a diesel engine head unless it's extremely well developed. Second of all, they used timing chains. The pump was chain-driven, the cam was chain-driven. The timing chains didn't break unless you were a doofus and tried to replace one and didn't crimp the master link wrong. So the moral of the story is you don't replace a timing chain unless it's going bad. Timing chains on Mercedes diesels are some of the strongest, toughest parts in the engine. I've only seen a couple of them that have failed. And again, it's because somebody else had been in there before and caused that failure. Now, another reason Mercedes engines did so well is because they were mostly analog. They didn't mess around with electronic fuel injection like Peugeot did. They built everything to work on a purely mechanical process. No control units, no electric pumps, no this, no that. 
A fourth reason Mercedes-Benz engines are so good is because they used inline Bosch injection pumps, much like the Cummins 5.9 did later on after 1993 when they got rid of that stupid Bosch VE rotary pump that didn't even have a timing mark on it. Rotary injection pumps are the cheap way out. They are much cheaper to build and much more difficult to rebuild. How do I know? Because we used to rebuild Stanodyne pumps at my dad's shop. And I remember, I remember on one occasion we put a rebuilt pump on a Ford 6.9 diesel and the thing just took off, revved to about 6,800 RPM and BTFO'd. <laughs> uh, BTFU'd. <laughs> Not out, up. <laughs> I mean, it shot push rods through its valve covers. That's how fast it was moving. And um, a fifth reason Mercedes engines were so good is because they were infinitely rebuildable. They used cylinder sleeves. They used machinable cranks. Parts were readily available. At the time, service was readily available. Service, service is actually still more available for those cars than it is like, say, a, a Suzu Gemini turbo diesel or whatever they used. Mercedes planned for every possible problem that could go wrong and they had those problems covered. There wasn't a part on the engines that was not documented. You know, and then of course you try to go buy parts for, um, I don't know, a Toyota diesel Camry or something and they're just going to look at you and be like, huh? What was that? So these are just a few of the reasons Mercedes diesels are so good, but the, the test of time is really the, the greatest judge, they say. And um, if you look at all the Mercedes diesels that are out there and driving around, you know, that were built from 85 and earlier, I think the one thing that we can all agree on is that Mercedes successfully dieselized the automobile. Sort of like Tesla thinks that they've I don't know, made the electric car a normal thing. At least for a while, for like 15 years, it was normal to see a Mercedes with a diesel engine. And for a lot of people that I work with, it is still normal. To me, it's normal. You know, a lot of people I know, it's perfectly normal. And um, thank God we still have diesel fuel. We probably always will because nothing comes close to producing power, usable working power like a diesel engine. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications, and um, appreciate your Mercedes diesels if you had one. And um, to quote Jerry Seinfeld, because apparently he watches this podcast, Pierre is out to convert the entire world to vintage Mercedes diesels, which, you know, diesels aren't for everybody, but they are great cars, and I wouldn't tell anybody who is a responsible, intelligent person who wants to have a vehicle they can maintain that will last forever that a Mercedes diesel is a bad choice for them. You know, there's some people that it's not a good choice for, but if you're in that category of person, you are probably a good fit for a Mercedes diesel. All right, I'll see you guys in the future. Take care.